Hello, ladies, gentlemen, everyone in between and beyond. My name is Ted. Welcome back to the Overcheers Podcast, episode 29, Storm Warning. Joining me today is arguably the mad lad who will, I'm assuming, hold the record for the longest episode of the podcast for a fair bit. Uh, I'm not expecting him to break that record today, hopefully. Uh, please help me welcome <laughs> back challenge? James. Hello. It is the meteorologist, meteorologist himself. Because I have a risk of rain for uh, <laughs> trying to be <laughs> okay, as <laughs> normal as possible today. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this is not his normal. I want to stress that. Uh, uh, okay, so is. you've already answered the first question of what we're, we're talking, what game we're talking about. Indeed. Uh, but James, what is it? Risk of rain one or two? In this case, it is risk of rain two, the second one after the first one. That, that, is, that is normally how number two works, is, is uh, the second one. Yes. But some people some so, people don't know how to count. Just just got to specify that. You know, got to be clear. Are you calling my audience dumb? No. Are you sure? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Making friends every day. <laughs> I, I know I'm extremely charismatic. I got high riz as kids... Do not say. Jesus Christ, <laughs> we're both too old for you to be saying that. Anyway, uh, for those watching at home, can you just quickly explain what Risk of Rain 2 is, like gameplay-wise? All right, so Risk of Rain 2 is one same as the last podcast episode I did, is a roguelike or roguelite surprise surprise so every run is different items you can pick different characters but as you progress you'll get different items um you go through stages you have to activate a teleport you have to survive get more items and eventually you either kill a boss or you kill yourself or you die that's usually the most likely answer um one really interesting thing about the Risk of Rain franchise, I guess, is that the um, as the game progresses, time is part of what you're fighting against. So if you spend too much time in one stage, the game gets harder and harder and harder until eventually you could have stayed in the same stage so for so long that you can't stay alive anymore. And you've in the further stages just because you wasted too much time so it's really uh, an interesting way to speed up the gameplay okay so the the increased difficulty from say stage two if you spend too long will carry over into the additional stages yes exactly so uh okay yeah so there's usually when you play in the top right um there's a little timer or a yeah a little clock that tells you uh what difficulty you're at it actually caps out on the graphic, on the UI, as ha 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 in that inflection oh as well. But it does keep getting harder and harder as you progress. So if you go on a three-hour Risk of Rain 2 run, which I have done, it will keep getting harder and harder and harder, even though the UI just says you've capped it out. But every time you activate a teleporter and every time you... Uh, and as you're just standing around, it the game will get harder. All right, then. That sounds terrifying. A bit exciting. Sometimes you get... Um, it sounds stressful, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, that's the fun. I don't like time pressures uh, fair if enough. I don't have to. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, how many achievements does this game have? Um, so, as of... Before... So, this is being recorded right before the um whatchamacallit it the DLC DLC comes out but 118 I know that afterwards after that DLC um which comes out later today actually um it'll increase by three more achievements okay. but at the moment it is just 118 Okay, that's... I mean, I don't want to say that's not too bad. It's not too bad in comparison to Binding of Isaac. It is, yeah, that's true. again, almost... It is more than double the average of, of other games. <laughs> Fair. I will say you are a maniac for getting all achievements in some of these, because, like, there's just... There's so many achievements, man. Yeah. 
Well, the nice thing about, uh, especially in roguelikes, there's a lot of achievements that you just receive for existing in the game. Oh, so it's a participation award. Yeah, there are a few achievements that it's just like, kill... Uh, the most common achievement in Risk of Rain, right, is defeat an elite-type monster, which is very, very simple to get. Okay. Um, Even though it sounds difficult because elites are a pain. You, oh, so, Especially yeah. if you play Halo. True. But in this game, elites... I mean, you can get them in the first stage. The thing that makes them elite is that they have like a partic uh, like one particular thing that makes them a little bit more challenging than the basic enemies. So some of them mm. set you on fire, some of them electrocute you, um, some of them are just tankier or freeze mm. you when they okay. die. So those are pretty cool. Okay. Fair enough. And, okay, so was this your first time playing the game? Or, like, like when you chose to go for all achievements, or do you, had you played it previously? Um, so, first I had played, I, I have played Risk of Rain 1, um, but I never really aimed for all achievements in that. I came into Risk of Rain mm -hmm. 2 with a similar mentality. Um, the thing that I like the most in this franchise is going until you can break the game and then either the game crashes or the game becomes so difficult that it can just one shot you but that time between um being one shotted is really funny because you can just walk in you accidentally kill one enemy and all of a sudden the entire map is dead somehow and you didn't do anything um yeah you were explaining this to me earlier and i'm so confused by how that works yeah so <clears throat> The another interesting mechanic about Risk of Rain is that there's a lot of stuff that can proc on hit effects. So okay. you have, you know, you have three basic item tiers. So you have either like the really basic ones, which just give you small stat upgrades, go faster. Um, that is still funny. Uh, crits, <laughs> uh, do more damage yeah. to bosses, etc. But then you have your green and red items. Your green items are the ones that start getting a little bit strange. For example, the really famous one is ukulele. And his- uh, Sorry, what? The ukulele. Okay, like the instrument. Yes. Um, okay. If When you pick it up, it says a little tagline, and his music was electric. Great. Mm. Oh God. Um, <laughs> the reason is, that has a chance that when you hit an enemy, it will cause a little like electric chain reaction, and each mm -hmm. chain can also proc any other on hits. So, oh, for example, if you also have portable missile launcher or um, uh, ATG Mark II, um, those are little missiles that shoot that have a chance to shoot every time you hit an enemy. So, for example, mm -hmm. you can hit someone with ukulele, and then that will proc the missiles, then the missiles will proc ukulele, and then it just kind of starts chain reacting. Okay, then. It's like a nuclear bomb. In indeed. Um, so this is this is more of a personal question, but highly related. James, are you are you attracted to people who are mentally unstable? Um, my lawyer advises me not to answer that question. Okay, because this game strikes me as, like, the equivalent of someone who is just... You just don't know what they're going to do next, and you're a little too enthusiastic about engaging with that. So I'm just like, is he... Is this just his thing? Um... I plead the fifth. <laughs> okay. Okay, we uh, we have the answer then. <laughs> the, the judge okay, would uh... like to remind the jury that pleading the fifth is not an incriminatory statement. The prosecution would like to remind the jury we are not in a North American court district. <laughs> uh, all right. My lawyer remain tells me to not answer any more questions in this line of questioning. <laughs> okay, well, separate line of questioning. Have you gone back to the game since you, you know, technically got all achievements, mm -hmm. excluding the upcoming DLC? All right, uh... Wow, 
it, this is a little bit sad, but um, I played a little bit after I got all the achievements. Okay. Um, but when um, the last time I played was in at the end of 2022, according to Steam. Oh, so it's been a while. It has been a while. It's been a hot minute since I last played. So I haven't really okay. gone back to play the game. I felt pretty satisfied after, you know, going through all the stuff, getting mm -hmm. all the achievements. Um, and the other thing was Risk of Rain 2 is a great co-op game. Um, you can okay. play it with up to four people. Yeah. And due to life reasons, um, a couple of the people that I used to play with, um, we couldn't play together anymore. So it kind of started to lose its luster once I didn't have like all those people mm. to hang out with. Okay. Okay. And how much would you say was like in terms of say percentage wise of your total runs? How what percentage was solo? What percentage was co-op? Ooh, uh, that's kind of hard to say. I'd probably say a lot of the achievements I got were uh, did happen in co-op as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I did get several of them. I do remember grinding several of them on my own, just because okay. either they were like very time committed or they were time committed for myself because I was not good at that particular character. So I just wanted to not waste your time as I mm -hmm. run into a wall nonstop. <laughs> but a lot Wait, of- Wait, why were you running into a wall? Well, it's more like swinging into a wall. It's like Spider-Man, but I'm bad at it. Okay then. Yeah. That doesn't answer my question. So imagine Spider-Man swinging into walls. No, no, I can picture <laughs> what you were doing. I'm asking why you were doing it. Because that one of the characters can do that. Yeah, but uh, one of the characters uh, that okay. I needed to like get achievements on has you like swinging around at the speed of sound. Wait, no, that's two different franchises. <laughs> anyway, Spider Sonic. Yeah, Spider Sonic. Um, but yeah, like the there's a character called the Loader where mm -hmm. you have to basically be Spider-Man except with a punch. It's pretty fun, but I'm very bad at it. So Okay, so it's not like you were intentionally trying to swing into walls. Right. That's just what ended up happening. Yeah, I, I just kept like I accidentally slamming into walls nonstop. So I did those by All myself. Right, um, but the characters that I was a lot more familiar with and I found easier... Um, those were the ones that I did that just ended up happening in co-op just because I was playing with them. Mm -hmm. But they just happened naturally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, okay, that's interesting. Now, this one you might not necessarily have the right answer for. How long did it take you like, to get all achievements in, you know, between both solo and co-op? Uh, it's hard to say. I don't remember how many hours I had in Risk of Rain before I started like gunning for all achievements mm -hmm. um probably took me a couple hundred hours honestly okay i don't know maybe like because right now the amount of time i have total is 314 hours i would say that's a fair bit i would say it probably took me around uh, it's hard to say around 250 probably mm-hmm um, okay. One of the things also that kind of delays you is if you have those ultra long runs that mm. they can easily add, say, three hours to your game time. But okay, that makes sense. You're not getting any achievements on that because maybe you were doing mm -hmm. something like Huntress and you've already gotten all the achievements on Huntress. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, okay, kind of related to the last question. Do you think you'll go back uh, for the DLC achievements? Probably. I, I do okay. I do still have a lot of fondness for the game. I've been, in the last few months, I've been getting the itch. Um, so I'll probably play a bit you of... You should probably see a doctor. Um, not that type of itch. It's the, the feelings itch. <laughs> the other itches... Well, the other things are just burns, not itches. You know. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, but I have been getting that want to play the game again. Listen mm -hmm. to that, some of the amazing music. Mm. Okay. 
Well, I'll tell you what, I will make the offer here in recording uh, that because I need to record gameplay for this anyway, mm. I don't mind playing some of the game with you if you want to do a bit in co-op so you're not just, like, bored out of your skull in solo. Uh, don't worry about it. I mean, I, I won't be bored out of my skull in solo. I will just be flying into walls, but this time intentionally. I, I do have reasons for that. It has to do with some achievements. And some personal achievements that I set for myself every time I play. Alright. <laughs> so... <clears throat> Yeah, I okay. I do think that I will be playing. I mean, I'm going to get the DLC as soon as I can, and then mm -hmm. um, grind that out. Is the DLC free, or is it a paid expansion? Um, This one is going to be a paid expansion. The first DLC okay. was free. So, Survivors mm -hmm. of the... No. Survivors of the Void was free. Um, but Seekers of the Storm is not. And I do okay. not know if there's going to be more dlc or if that new dlc will be paid it most likely will um but i know that the developers hobo kind of have taken sorry hopo yes hopo okay I, I wanted to make sure i heard that correctly um they've kind of moved away from the game they they obviously mm. care a lot about the game but i think they spent a very long time on the game um, Risk of Rain okay. 1 came out around the time that, like, Flash Isaac came out, so it's very old. Oh. And they okay. they started it as a college project. It was made in Game Maker. Oh. It was not stable. Oh, wow. <laughs> and now it's become a pretty big phenomenon, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Is there going to be Risk of Rain 3? Most likely not. I don't think there will Fair be. Fair enough. I think they want okay, to move into other types of games. Okay. I'd be curious to see where that where that goes. Hopefully. All right. I know they've done... Uh, uh, let, uh, what's the other game that Hobo did? I think it was Deadlock? Okay. If I remember, Deadlock did okay. Dead, uh, it's Deadbolt. Great. Deadbolt. Oh, Deadbolt. Okay. I, yeah, that one did better. That yes. one, I, I remember watching that yes. one. I, okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That's, that's quite a different game. It is. But um, okay. they, I do know that they've been trying to like branch out and explore their uh, creative skills. Mm hmm. Okay. So why don't we get into the real meat of the podcast now? Um, what would you say were the hardest and easiest achievements for you? The hardest and easiest achievements. Um, let's ignore the easiest achievement overall which is just to defeat an elite type monster um there's sure a, there's if you want to that's fine there's a couple that are just um very basic one of the ease uh, let's start with the hardest achievement because i know that one for sure the final boss um spoilers for anyone who cares is a little guy called Mithrix. Um, he is a funny little guy. He's actually bigger than the player, so he's not a little guy. He's a big guy. But I call him a little guy. Okay. Um, he. It would be funnier if he was, in fact, a little guy. He, but he is a large guy, unfortunately. But uh, he moves like he is a little guy. He's, he's kind of a gremlin. He just, like, moves very, very quickly. Okay. So he can be... He's actually very challenging. I am not very good at that fight. I also haven't really mm -hmm. practiced it as much as I probably should. Okay. Um, because usually I just end up obliterating myself. But yeah. uh, as for what it's worth as well, obliteration is one of the ways to canonically like end the game. You can either obliterate or oh. you can kill Mithrix. There's a couple other things. but. Uh, and wait, what is, when you say obliterate, what are we... Be more specifically, what does that entail? Um, you have to loop through the game, so you have to go through eight stages, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, okay. Basically, fight a bunch of monsters on the... And then there's a portal that opens up that you can just go in and touch a little obelisk, and it's like, are you sure you want to obliterate? And you're like, yes, and then the game ends. 
Mm -hmm. There's a okay, that... there's slight lore reasons to it. There is actually lore in this game, which is not something most people would think about, but there is. Yeah, really, a lot of roguelikes don't necessarily have that. I feel like the there's very few, you know, maybe this one, Binding of Isaac, Hades are the ones I can think of off the top of my head, and I'm sure there's more, it's just I... not ones that I would immediately come to mind. I think the biggest reason is... So this game doesn't really have lore in the actual gameplay. Um, it's okay. all in like the items that you pick up and the bosses you grab, because all of those are from the context of like they're written as mm -hmm. explorers that have picked up this item or like shipping labels for certain items, etc. So, wait, wait, when you say you grab bosses that you grab, why are you grabbing bosses? Sorry. Items that you grab, <laughs> bosses that you kill. I misspoke. Okay, I, that, I was like, are you just are you just out here hugging them? With loader, you can. That's an intro. All right, but generally, no, you cannot grab them. Usually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but all right, back to Mythrix though. Mythrix. Yes. Yes. Zooms around a lot. There is okay. a character called the Captain, El Capitan, and okay. one of the things that he can do is he can call down a supply beacon and that will give you say a chest it'll open up a chest and mm -hmm. it'll give you an item or it'll open up a bunch of items it really depends on you can kind of customize your character's loadout but at its core it'll drop down a supply be beacon <clears throat> okay it does happen to do a very large amount of damage because as you would imagine okay if you have a thing coming in from space and slimes into you it will probably kill you um do not mm -hmm. do not get hit by a kinetic bombardment so mm -hmm. mythrix is running around a lot you can call down the supply beacon but the supply beacon can will land and do a lot of damage, but it takes a very long time for it to land. Mm. Which means that if what you can do is technically kill the final boss with that supply beacon, but you have to either be very lucky or you have okay. to time things just right so that it doesn't end up like being a wasted supply beacon because the other thing is you only mm. have two of them per stage so if you mm. miss those two you you just have to do a new run to try to get that achievement again oh okay so now is it a one shot it, when the supply beacon hits the boss or do you have to hit it with both so the way i did it is um it is not a one shot it does a lot of damage but it's not a one shot okay. so what okay. i did is i basically whittled down the boss's health as much as I could. And he does have one attack that mm -hmm. um, where he stands still. Uh, so what I did is I, the thing that makes this attack extra challenging is that for the first half of the attack, he's completely invulnerable as he channels. And then uh, okay. afterwards he becomes vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So you have to time it just right to bait out this attack um, where then he channels and then as he's channeling you have to call down the supply beacon and have it slam down in time because he does yeah. not stand still for very long after he finishes that invulnerability mm -hmm. so after that he just starts running at you with all of your items that he stole from you because he's a thief and then he kills you oh um, okay then he's a scary little guy a scary big guy it sounds it sounds like it, yeah. yeah. But it's a it's a really fun fight. It's really well done, in my opinion. Uh, but okay. that okay. achievement... Oh, God, that achievement took me so much time. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, that one was pretty difficult. Um, the other one that was pretty difficult, for me at least, was... Um, there's an achievement with a character called the Bandit, uh, okay. called Sadist. Oh, by the way, I uh, forgot. Uh, oh, so it's just you. Uh, <laughs> um, my lawyer has advised me not to answer that question either. Uh, the 
uh, supply beacon achievement was called Smushed. Captain Smushed, by the way. But okay. this one is yep. Bandit yep. Sadist. And what happens okay. is he has a little knife where if you hit someone in the back with it, it applies a stack of bleed. One okay. achievement is to kill a monster with 20 stacks of hemorrhage. 20 stacks of bleed. Yeah. What made that achievement challenging to do wasn't that it's difficult to get that achievement like it's not difficult to apply stacks of hemorrhage it's difficult to find a monster that won't just die with 20 stacks oh. of hemorrhage it is very ah, easy to okay. like just kill something if they're that tanky so i had to do like several loops i had to go through and probably got to stage 10 or 11 before i was able to find a monster that was tanky enough to hit uh, handle that much mm -hmm. damage mm -hmm. uh, but that one was pretty fun um, difficult and what was the easiest one easiest achievement yes easiest achievement I'm just looking through these there's um one that was kind of amusing kind of funny okay. was um what's it called the demons and the crabs kill 20 uh, excuse me what <laughs> the crabs yes uh kill 20 hermit crabs by chasing them off the edge of the map oh man i love hermit crabs they're so cute yes but these are not cute these are like artillery and they hurt a lot okay then um so hermit the little hermit crabs in this game uh, basically shoot artillery, as I said. They're like little mortars and do a bunch of damage. But they have no close quarters ability, so they just run away from you. Um, okay. There are certain maps that have an edge and a kill box at the bottom of that edge, right? Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can just run up to little hermit crabs and run at them as they crawl away from you, and they'll just fall off the map and die. Uh, oh, my. It's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. It's also um, it's not like the easiest thing you can do. It has a pretty low achievement percentage according to Steam, but the achievement itself it doesn't require very much. You have to loop at least once, so you have to do yeah. the first few stages at least one time. But then you can kind of push them off the map. Um, and there's certain maps that do spawn that have those edges. Not all the maps have edges, so not all of them. You can't do it on all of the maps, but there are a couple that you can't do it. Okay. So one day I just like sat there and ran at hermit crabs until they died. So that was funny. Okay, then. It was it was a very amusing afternoon. Um, so you, okay, you you do understand how psychotic that sounds, <laughs> especially outside of context. Well, yeah, but every like a lot of things will sound psychotic if you say them outside of context. It's, yeah, it's not even as bad as th th this one. Even in context, is a little psychotic. It's fine. I'm a normal person. I have no issues. You realize I'm keeping in the intro, right? <laughs> oh God, <laughs> that's that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> But oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh dear. Um, but yeah, those are some pretty easy and pretty hard achievements. That's fair. Okay. Okay. Now, outside of those that you just mentioned, what were the most and least fun for you? The most and least fun for me. Uh, there was. There's one character called Rex. He's a plant. Okay. He's a sentient plant. Yeah. Um, and he can do damage by, you know, hurting himself because that's what plants do, mm -hmm. right? And this one achievement, you have to beat the teleporter event while under 50% health the entire time. Mm -hmm. So what makes this really challenging is you have to start the teleporter, the thing that charges up so you can go to the next stage um you have to charge it up from before like you have to be under 50 percent, and you have to keep it that way the entire time which is oh 
obviously difficult. Yeah. But also, because you can just die. Uh, by the way, this one's mm -hmm. called Bushwhacked, because he's a bush. Okay. Um, uh, I see. He was... Uh, the other issue is he has healing as well to keep himself mm -hmm. healthy. Uh, so as you're doing that trade-off of, oh, I'm doing a bunch of damage with my own health, I'm also life uh, life stealing from them. So you can yeah. maintain that. So it becomes very easy to accidentally go over 50% health. So that was really frustrating a few times. Um, <clears throat> the other one that was... Uh, pardon. Yeah. Uh, so this one, uh, bushwhacked, was a really challenging achievement because mm -hmm. it's very easy to either die if you keep it low enough or go over accidentally just because of the healer. Okay. So, oh yeah, that does sound like a pain. Um, the another one that was pretty challenging, at least for me, uh, was multi. The achievement called God. Multi? Yeah. Multi is a little robot. Uh, okay. He he can be fun, but he's not my style of play. Mm -hmm. And one of them is land the killing blow on an imp overlord with the prion accumulator. Okay. The issue with that one is the imp overlord teleports a lot. And yeah. the prion accumulator, while it does do a lot of damage takes a bit of time to charge up before you can shoot it it's very similar it's almost similar to uh smushed but okay. it's a little bit more accessible i'd say because yeah. the prion accumulator you know is on a cooldown so you don't have to worry about oh i used both of them and now i can't try again um, and Imp Overlords will respawn, so it's not a completely lost run. But it took me a very long time okay. to uh, achieve that. So those mm -hmm. were probably the ones that I didn't enjoy as much. They were a bit of a pain. That's fair. They, they sound rather. They sound more annoying than anything. Mm -hmm. um, there's. <laughs> okay. So. There's a couple that are actually really fun. There was the loader. What was it called? Oh, there was, yes, there was Railgunner Trickshot, which was one that I was going to talk about in a little moment. And okay. loader Earth Shatter. Mm -hmm. um, so as loader Lark land a charge gauntlet hit at 300 miles per hour or higher. Okay. So, Loader, what she can do is she can charge up a punch and she goes forward, yeah. and she can also swing, like Spider-Man, and you can combine both things and go very fast. My favorite thing to do in Risk of Rain 2 is go very fast. In fact, mm -hmm. I have done this several times where I go so fast that if you hit geometry at, like, the right angle, you just go straight up and hit the skybox. Um, oh, God. Okay. So that is very amusing to me. Especially mm -hmm. because the animations start getting very silly as you're, like... Your animation doesn't change at a certain point, so you're going super fast. Yeah. But also you have the normal run animation, so it just looks very odd it just looks accelerated oh. so you're scurrying along uh but yeah. earth shatter i it was really fun just because i got to go fast <laughs> that's that's Fair. really the 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 only thing um mm -hmm. one of my favorite items is the wax quail um <laughs> okay. going fast recommended is the achievement Wait, oh wait, okay, so hang on. Is, well, that's the achievement name or that's the item name? That's the achievement name. The I, Okay, going, yeah. going fast recommended is the achievement. Um, the item name is Wax Quail. To unlock it, you have to... Okay, so yeah. wait, hang on, sorry, I'm, I'm confused. A quail is just a small bird. Yes. And if you know, it seems like it's made out of wax, how does that in any way relate to speed? Um, Because you throw them up and then you shoot them, right? Like these, I think these are little skeet 
shooting birds. Oh, pigeon. Oh, okay, yeah. clay pigeons. Clay. I get it. I get it. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, the other thing is the a lot of these items you can actually end up seeing them on your character model in game. Okay. As you pick them up. That's always nice. I like yeah. that. So the wax quail just ends up right on top of your head. It looks like a little hat. It's very cute. Um, mm -hmm. But reach 300 move speed. Very fun. And then with the wax quail, you can... Every time you jump while sprinting, you'll do like a little boost forward. But yeah. much like basically every single item in the game, it stacks on itself. Yeah. So... If you get enough wax whales, you might do a little jump by sprinting, and then you'll go forward like 500 meters. So that's hilarious. Oh wow! It's it's just hilarious. Uh, for me, that is. I probably have a clip of that somewhere because I do that a lot. Um, okay then. It's. Uh, I just love jumping. Um, but yeah, that one, and then the rail gunners. Achievements. Okay. Uh, both, uh, what's it called? Both Marksman and Trickshot were really fun. The Rail Gunner is basically a sniper. Um, which is interesting because this game has so many mobs. So you have to be able to clear them out quickly. But the Rail Gunner or Sniper is mostly a single target character. Oh, okay. So you have to be really, really fast with your shots. So you have to like be constantly uh, shooting and hitting the weak spots. So both of those were really fun. Um, the let's see, trick shot was a little bit more challenging for me. Mm -hmm. I had to find like a place where I could jump off and then get three kills. So I had to like get a perfect lineup and stuff. But it was fun, mm -hmm. and the marksman was. Uh, a little bit more approachable for me because I was just okay. hit 20 weak points in a row so I just did that yeah. basically as soon as I played the character for the first time so that was really easy but very fun to just play that it just feels good to play that character mm -hmm. uh, so those are the most fun and least fun Okay. Okay. Well, that's fair. That, yeah, you have a fair few, which I, I really appreciate because it. I can tell whenever I bring you on the podcast, you genuinely care about the games, mm -hmm. and you're not nearly as cynical as some of. Well, even even I have become about some of the games. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will say like, I do have criticisms about basically every game I've played, but I yeah, but I do associate more positive memories. I mean, that's why I got all the achievements on them. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would get all achievements in a game that makes me miserable. You also don't hate yourself for doing it, mm -hmm. which I think is is a big one. Mm. Fair. Like even when I had Rich on the podcast, uh, which will have been last month at the time that this goes out, uh, the last week at the time of recording, like he did the first Halo, Halo CE, and like he said, that experience was miserable trying to just do the things the achievement required of him. Right. I, I definitely understand how certain games might push you in that direction of kind of hating either mm -hmm. the game or yourself just because of how exhausting some achievements can be. Yeah. But to me, I also think about it. Oh God, we're about to get into philosophy again. Um, I just kind of here we go. <laughs> I just kind of think of if it's like the most challenging achievements oftentimes are the most the ones that feel the best because it's like wow i did that i'm pretty cool yeah um <laughs> there are some achievements that it's just like why am i doing this with my life because mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. feels like you're wasting time and not getting better at the yeah. game but the get the achievements even the hard ones that make me think about the game in a different way or like try something different that's the type of stuff that i really like Okay. Because it makes me feel like I've gotten something out of the game. Nice. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, let's see. What is the rarest achievement on the list, like, in of all the available achievements right now? And do you feel it deserves its position as the rarest? Um, so the rarest is Smushed. Um, 
Okay. Probably. It's very difficult. It's very challenging to do. Because, first of all, killing Mithrix is not an easy task. Killing the final boss is not an mm -hmm. easy task. Um, he's, as I mentioned, a very challenging boss. He has three phases. Straight up a Dark Souls okay. boss. Um, yeah. But then also, you, like, Captain, at least for me, is not necessarily the easiest character. Um, okay. He doesn't really have any mobility. So in this mm. game where you do want to go fast, uh, yeah. going fast recommended, um, he feels weak, at least for me, at the beginning. And then that supply beacon on Mythrix is so challenging just because you have to time things correctly. It's a very mm. challenging achievement, in my opinion. Um, the second rarest achievement, Void Fiend Mastery, I don't think that should be that low. I'll just go through okay. like the, the bottom four because I talked about Smushed already. Yeah, sure. Um, Void Fiend yeah. Mastery is just obliterate with a specific character. I don't think that should be low because the that character is pretty strong. Um, mm -hmm. But I do th understand why a little bit. Just because it is a character that takes up a fair bit of like understanding of what's going on in the game and then obliterating yeah. on monsoon monsoon's not easy at all uh okay then i mentioned bandit sadist killing the yep. the hemorrhage yep. so that one is pretty challenging i that one's t only 10 percent of people have that one everything above that mm. is 10.1 and then the thunderdome by loader that one's fun okay um it's kind of challenging i think the most difficult thing about that one is a lot of people don't know how how to get that achievement so i think this leads into the did you ever use guides question yeah uh, okay we can yeah we can discuss that one in a little bit um so yeah those there are a few things that i personally needed a guide for um, you can find a lot of them in the game. So, for example, getting all of the artifacts. You can find little codes in the game and you can put them in, but it's a lot easier if you just look up and have a list of the ones that you need to use. So I had, mm, to, do, fair. I had to do that. Um, finding Nakahuna was pretty difficult. Because I just mm -hmm. didn't know where to even start looking. I saw the achievement name and I didn't know where to go. Um, so I had to look that one up. And then figuring out how... I think those are the two big ones, at least in the achievements. So I had to use guides for a couple of them, but a lot of them are very, very straightforward. Uh, the biggest ones are getting those trials and getting those artifacts which yeah. if you don't know how to find that you can't get them mm -hmm. uh because everything else is pretty straightforward okay. death do us part okay death do us part. uh there's a couple of them that, um, uh, in my opinion um the devs did a really good job at making the a lot of the achievements very accessible even like in game so death to a spark is an achievement where you it's possible to do it alone mm -hmm. but it's a lot easier in co-op um okay. and it's basically on the second stage if you get the right stage um there are two buttons somewhere around the map so both of you have to press that button Oh, okay. Uh, so wait, then how could you do that? How could you do that alone? The engineer can place down the turret on the button. Ah, uh, okay. Um, Interesting. But as you do that, uh, I don't remember the exact text that shows up in the chat, but it says something like something, an ancient mechanism moves or something. So you say, mm -hmm. you notice, oh, I stood here, 
And then I got that little chat message, I wonder if something else similar will happen and if there's another button. And you find it and then it says something like, an ancient door opens. And then you go look for that ancient mm -hmm. door and you go in. And then you kill two uh, married couple and steal their rings. Okay. There's some great- oh, Well, that that sounds absolutely horrible. Why would you do that? Uh, they're very good rings, great items. Okay, well, listen, I know that if you start eyeing my wedding ring, I'm going to be very suspicious. Um, don't worry, I don't think that they have those same effects. Also, your name's... Not that I will admit to. <laughs> you know, probably a good idea. Don't admit to it. Um, yeah, they they have names. It's They even have na the little... They are monsters in the game, technically, but they are mm -hmm. married. They have names, so it does feel a little bit bad. Because you're just like... Oh, so you're just breaking up this this wholesome relationship. Yeah. How could you? Yeah, you just, like, did all of this to open a door, raid their house, and just kill them and steal their stuff. It's not very nice. Oh, my God. That's that's called that's called breaking and entering and murder. Yeah. It's called multiple felonies. My lawyer advises me not to answer any more questions <laughs> about that. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so this one, I feel like this one is probably the hardest question for you specifically because you have so many stories and so many memories about so many of the different achievements. What one to you stands out as the most memorable and what gave it that, like what made it such an impression on you? Most memorable achievement. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, let me think. Because there's... A few that were really fun. Mm -hmm. One that I really liked was Moon Worshipper. Okay. Um, Moon Worshipper unlocks an item called the Glowing Meteorite. So, mm -hmm. first of all, lunar items are a special class of item that you can't get r normally. You have to basically buy them with lunar coins. Um, and lunar items are really interesting in that they have extremely powerful effects. So for example, shaped glass gives you uh, plus 100% damage. So a bunch of damage. Oh wow, or, okay. Or even more, I don't remember the exact number. The problem is it also max reduces your max health by 50%. Mm -hmm. So you can keep stacking it down until you have literally one health, and then you'll just die as soon as anything looks at you the wrong way. Uh, oh, which would be funny. But mm -hmm. uh, you can have certain items that, for example, one that I really liked was Spinal Tonic. It's a used item okay. that gets you addicted to drugs. Uh, yeah. You, Whenever you use it, you can... You do more damage, you move faster, you shoot faster, it's great. Uh, but whenever the item isn't active, you have a chance of getting basically withdrawal symptoms that you cannot remove. And you move slower without that item. So you would move slower and slower and slower until eventually you can't go anywhere. And it's mm -hmm. great. Until you do drugs again. There's ways around it. Please don't do not do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. Just the kids, though. Uh, but yeah, like, there's ways around it. Like, for example, having permanent drug <laughs> uptime, which you can okay. actually accomplish. Yeah. So that one was really fun. I like getting that one. Especially because the item that unlocks, Moon Worshipper, mm -hmm. uh, or Glowing Meteorite, is basically calls down a meteor strike on the map for I don't remember the exact time, it's like 30 or 50 seconds uh, 15 seconds? 15 seconds I think um, so that's great and all but those meteors do a lot of damage to the enemies yeah. and to you and to your friends Oh god! if you're playing oh, with friends no. uh, yeah. and remember that I mentioned permanent uptime Mm -hmm. So you can do that with glowing, glowing meteorites as well. So one time oh, I just, no. <laughs> so one time after getting unlocking it, I was able to just get permanent uptime, and my friends were just like, "James, why would you do this to us? Why would you just keep meteorites <laughs> pounding us the entire time?" We did not survive that yeah. run, but it was very funny for me. 
So I like Moon Worshipper a lot. Okay. Lunar items, ten out of ten. Do worship the moon. So all I, all I'm picturing is the is the newspaper headline: Man pounds friends with giant glowing balls. Yes, that is accurate to what I did. Correct. I want you to send that to your friends. Just send this up. Just send this vi this sound clip to your friends when this episode airs and just see what they say. <laughs> They'll agree. They'll agree for sure. Okay. Now, okay, before I get too far off topic, what was the name of this particular achievement again? Uh, the achievement itself was wor Moon Worshipper. Moon okay, right, yeah, you did mention that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Was, there was so much going on. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, the aside is also cool. Just because the name is cool, the, the boss itself was fine. All right, then. Great words. I like words. <laughs> Now, is there an achievement you would remove from the game? Achie achievement that I would remove from the game. <sighs> this one's always a little bit challenging. Mm -hmm. um, because I do like getting achievements. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't. I don't think I would really necessarily want to remove any of the achievements from the game as i think about okay. it some of them are ridiculously easy that are just basically participation awards yeah um but i think those are fine because one similar to how it is in isaac you get a bunch of uh cheap uh, not achievements items every time you get an achievement or like you get something every mm. time you get an achievement but yeah the other thing is also, like, especially as you're getting started, it feels mm. much better. Hey, I'm getting an achievement. I just killed a challenging enemy and I got an achievement. I'm so good. Or, oh, I yeah. completed the teleporter event. I'm so good. Whereas, so even the easiest achievements, the ones that are, again, participation trophies, I think are, have their place. And in this game, I don't think uh, tying in with like, do they feel rewarding as well? I don't think any of them are not rewarding per se. Mm -hmm. um, even the one, yeah, they all give you something new at least, which is really fun. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fair. That's good. I, again, this is one of the things where it's super polarizing. Some people are like, yes, get rid of this, mm -hmm. like one garbage achievement. Then others are just like, nah, nah, they're good. Yeah. I mean, I I had this a similar thing back in Isaac, but in this game, I don't think there's a lot fewer achievements, and all of them make sense within the context of the type of game that it is. So mm -hmm. I think it's fine. The closest might be something like. The closest might be her concepts. Find the altar okay. to Nakahuna, just because it's really difficult to find that altar without yeah. the guide. But at okay. the same time, I don't think that's a the fault of the achievement. I think that's just like the map should have a little bit more like you should have a little bit more of a hint. But mm -hmm. none of them really feel too bad. I love Okay. I love dying. Die 20 times. <laughs> That's an achievement as well. <laughs> of course it is. Okay, so on the opposite end, is there an action or way of playing that there should be an achieve- Wow, an official achievement for that there isn't currently? Yeah, I would say so. Um, okay, There's okay. a couple of things. So you can get 100% like achievements, even if you haven't done 100% mm -hmm. of the content. There's oh, a couple okay. of things called Eclipse Trials, which I haven't done uh, many of, because they, they came out roughly when I s was toning, like slowing down how much I was playing. Mm. Um, where it's basically like extra challenge runs. Those, those should probably have at least one achievement associated with them. Mm -hmm. um, probably a couple more. And then the other one is... There's a very hidden secret boss uh, oh. that's pretty interesting. Okay. But he's so hidden, he doesn't even have an achievement. Um, yeah. He's quite challenging and pretty fun. 
I've only beaten him like once. Uh, it's really difficult. So I do think that that mm -hmm. should have that should probably have an achievement. I think I understand okay. why it doesn't. Yeah, because it is like intentionally like kept away in a little corner. Um, mm -hmm. Just like mm -hmm. don't don't look at the spider over there. He's just my friend, like that type of thing. Yeah, but. It would be nice if it did have an achievement. Okay. So I think so now. Okay, let, let me let me extend something to that. So you you mentioned two achievements: one for the trials, one for the boss. What would you name these achievements? Like, what should their titles be? Hmm. Ah, uh, I was not expecting that question. <laughs> this requires creativity for me, and that's not something I have. Um. For the Eclipse Trials? I mean, you could probably do something like Eclipsed, and it's just like a very mm -hmm. basic one. Um, I don't know. For the Hidden Boss? What is the what is the name of the boss? Mm, I don't know. It feels like extra spoilery to reveal that since it doesn't oh, okay, have... Okay, never mind. So, I don't know. Maybe something like... What I would say... <laughs> Uh, this is a hard one. I almost want to like turn it into like uh, Manus from Dark Souls pun. Um, oh God, okay. Know, source of the Void or something, or like Lord of the Void, okay, something like that. Yeah, something related to that, um, because that is what the boss is associated with. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I want to, like, I was fine spoiling Mythrix because the game has been out for so long that um, mm -hmm. you probably should know about that one. But, or not should know about it, but what I mean to say is it would be very difficult to not have heard about it. Um, and Yeah, that's fair. But for that little final, secret final boss, since I don't think many people know about it, um... I don't know. I think it should have its own achievement. Okay. Oh, maybe you could maybe call it Stargazer. That would okay. be cool. That'd be cool. Because yeah, the yeah. the area is in a place called the Planetarium, so that could mm. so that could be cool. Stargazer. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that would that would be pretty solid. Fair enough. I also, if the trials one, if you wanted to go pull away from like Eclipse, I might just go with like Order in the Court. Order in the know, Court. Trials, Court. Mm, fair. You could do that. Um, judged by the Moon. I don't know, something like that. That could be fun. Okay, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so, yeah, keep that going. That was actually a fun question. I had, I had never. <laughs> thought about naming achievements in my mind i'm just like aha i should get an achievement for that because even as we're talking about the achievements i remember yeah. the achievements but i don't necessarily remember all of their names uh, and that's the thing right is you gotta you have to name the achievements you have to do there's so much work that goes into yeah. them that we just kind of ignore yeah absolutely because we're focused on what you have to do to get them. exactly uh i'm gonna shout out to an old episode of the podcast uh, because i'm a, a hopeless shill with no morals, uh, episode 10, I brought on a friend of both the channel and myself, his name is David. He is the artist who does almost all of the artwork for my channel, uh, between like the thumbnail templates, the banner, everything like that, and I had him judge the artwork, uh, like the achievement artwork for three different games of his choosing, and how he might redesign some of the artwork because, especially for Final Fantasy, oh god, 15. It was just generic mm. emblems and, and symbols, mm -hmm. and it's like, this could have been so much more. Absolutely. I, uh, yeah, there are some games that, like, it's just those those achievements. For example, um, I know Risk of Rain, the actual achievement icons aren't exactly the mm -hmm. most thrilling. It's just basically, like, the Dreams? item. Uh, They're pretty good. The I mean they are good, but like as it's literally just the item that you would pick up in the game, or like the character that you pick up in the game. Mm. 
Um, what I do really... That's more than some games get. Fair. What I do really like is just the amount of effort that they put into naming them. The little lore tidbits, I guess, that you can do mm -hmm. when you like open up the logbook. You can see how many times you've picked up an item, how many times you've stacked an item, all of those things. Okay. And then you can see like some lore about where it came from. Most of it is very sad. Um, mm. There's some very funny ones. Oh, I should have right. I should have had that one pulled up. Uh, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of like lore for some strange things. Uh, mm -hmm. There was an energy drink that basically. Uh, a quick toxicology test on some of the victims has come back positive for all for um all kinds of stuff really methadone and just starts listing a bunch of drugs and i so bang energy yeah <laughs> i love stacking that item cuz it makes me go fast <laughs> of course <laughs> i am a very okay. i'm a very simple man that's okay. We we appreciate that around here. Me. Are you able to soft lock yourself out of any of the achievements? Um, I don't think so. Uh, similar to Risk of Rain, um, since every run is different, um, mm -hmm. obviously you can't. Well, uh, there's a few achievements you can't get in the same run. Okay, but it is technically Fair. possible to get. I don't know if all the achievements, but most of the achievements in the same run. Yeah, okay. Which is kind of amusing. Um, because there's ways to technic there's technically ways to change your character mid-game. Oh. Uh, but you don't really get to control it. It is random. Okay, interesting. But, huh. which would be... And I, yeah, I feel like... Huh? Go ahead. And the other thing is items will start dropping as soon as you unlock them in that game as well, I think. Mm, okay, okay. So as soon as you unlock it in the run, you can start a seeing it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I feel like roguelikes really negate this question just by their nature. Yeah. Um, so, uh, that is one thing that I really like. The only thing would probably just be the... how... Yeah, you could even do killing Mithrix in the same run as you obliterate. Oh. Alright then. Interesting. That's unexpected. It would be challenging, but technically possible, I think. Technically is the best kind of possible. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna split the next question up into two. One, so the first part is, how many runs, like, in general, overall, do you do you think you would have to do? Obviously, you don't have a concrete number. Um, if you were playing it, like, you're most efficient. Um, and the, the secondary question is, how many runs do you have to do per character? Mm, interesting. Do you think? Um, so, as I said, you if you want to be, like, maximally efficient per run like get as many achievements mm -hmm. in the same run you'd probably need i don't know like three or four just to get like all the endings um because mm -hmm. i think you can get characters you haven't unlocked from that random switch yeah if you want to get everything like be as efficient as possible in one for most of them, you can do it in one or two runs. There's a couple okay. that you have to do in multiple runs because some of the achievements that you get with characters let you equip different abilities, uh, which yeah. change kind of how the game works. And there are some abilities that are specific to an achievement that you need to get as well. So you wouldn't be able to like switch okay. those out. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I think... 
Honestly, for most of them, I think you'd basically be able to do it in one go. Okay. Just like okay. Yeah. Wow, that's really unexpected because most of them are like you have to do five hundred runs and you know sacrifice your firstborn. Yeah, it's it's funny because it does sound like oh wow you can just do it in one run. It, that does not mean that it's going to be easy doing that in one run. Mm -hmm. Um. Some of those, as I mentioned, for example, for me, Loader or Rex were very difficult to get that yeah. second achievement. Um, you have to, Sometimes you have to really sacrifice a lot of other things that you would normally do to get one of those achievements. For example, uh, Sadistic, the Bandit achievement, you have to stack up a, a bunch of cooldown reduction items so mm -hmm. that you can get those 20 stacks before the monster dies, basically. So you're just like... Click, click, yeah, click. so you have to do it so quickly yeah. that their health doesn't have a chance to hit zero. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So that's really challenging, especially yeah. because then maybe if you want to do something where uh, you need to kill the final boss, all of a sudden mm -hmm. the only thing you can do is use an ability really quickly. You also just don't do much else to the final boss. And then you would have to simultaneously get through a really challenging fight and also have really suboptimal items for that fight. Oh god, that sounds awful. So, uh, some of the achievements, I mean, technically, if you're just a god gamer, you would be able to do it, but I I am certainly not good enough to do things yeah. like that. Okay. So, does the game feel... Does the game reward you for getting all achievements? Like, is there any, like, grand unlock? Uh... That is probably one of the things that I would like from the game. Just like a, an <laughs> extra little achievement that says, hey, you did all of it. Because um, you don't get a, a final achievement. You don't get that. Da -da -da -da, <laughs> you're so good. You got all the achievements. You just know, yo, yeah. I got smushed. Yay, smushed. That's That's <laughs> all you get. <laughs> Okay. And then, like, okay. say you get the little like um, ribbon on Steam that you can look at, and you're like, "Haha, yeah. I'm good at games." Yeah, that's really it. Okay. Oh, fair enough. Do the achievements themselves feel rewarding? Do the achievements themselves feel rewarding? I would say so. I um, I think I mentioned, like, I touched on this earlier. The basically. All of the achievements unlock something. Um, yeah. As someone who is significantly better at the game than someone who is just starting something like Elite Slayer, defeat an elite type monster, for me would not be particularly rewarding. But as someone who is just starting the game, has no idea what the hell is going on, <clears throat> mm -hmm. is just kind of getting through it by the skin of their teeth that would be really awarding. It's like, wow, I did something really cool. But as you get... <clears throat> um, even things like... Uh, what was it called? I literally said it a moment ago. I love dying. Uh, dying die okay, 20 yeah. times, right? The item you get isn't great, but if you're really struggling at the beginning, that could help you because it basically drops a little decoy that uh, gives you a get-out-of-jail-free card for a little bit. So, even the most, the achievements that for me aren't particularly exciting, I see their value. And then, all of the achievements that you can get, you can either get a skin on your character, which usually looks pretty cool. Um, or, you get a specific item, you like unlock a new item or a new ability on the character. So I think that's really fun. Okay. Uh, huh? Because okay, that's fair. Some of the, some of the different abilities change up the way you play almost entirely. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Like you can go from being a long range sniper that shoots a million damage in one hit to being a sniper that shoots very quickly but does a lot less damage, so you can uh, crowd clear a lot easier. Um, so you're like mm. a little bit more in the fray. So I, I think it's really cool how some of the uh, abilities change up so much, so significantly. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, does it feel like the devs cared about the achievements? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Say as I uh, related again to, I love dying. Um, <laughs> like some of them, we we get it, man. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these, I think, are really well placed. Some of them are really like nicely placed to give you um, a bit of respite as you're like struggling. Um. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they're really specific achievements uh, that are a little bit odd, but f yeah. for the most part, they're very, I think they're thought out. Some of the artwork might be, like, don't get me wrong, I love the art style of Risk of Rain, but maybe they could have done something a little bit more exciting arguably i think they're fine i really love the the names though that they have like glorious battle um piercing wind cool stuff you know okay okay um so i do think that the devs i mean i think they really do care a lot about the game even if hopu mm -hmm. decided to just like move on with their lives and try a different game okay try expanding yeah. their horizons okay that's good so, okay, this one, you've already kind of talked about it, that the, the game does not require you to get 100% achievements, or 100% in the game itself, mm -hmm. uh, to get all achievements. What does it not include when it comes to the achievements that you could still do in the game? Uh, what does it not include? Yeah, so like, what do you not, what do you not have to do to get all achievements? Um, you don't have to get all the log entries, I think. So you don't have okay. to pick up every item. Yeah. Um, although it's kind of difficult to not pick up every item at some point. Fair. Um, especially because as you might say, oh, I got a new item. I want to pick it up. You'd have to like intentionally <laughs> avoid items. Um, you don't have to pick up all the log entries for the maps. It's technically not something okay. you need to do. Um... So every map, every stage has its own lore. You can see details about it, um, learn about what it is, and how you're actually a terrible person because you're actually a mercenary that's destroying the fragile ecosystem of an unknown planet. Um, you're actually the bad person in this in the game, which is funny. Oh God! Uh, it was, uh, it's very much a situation where we are the baddies. Yeah, we, you are not a great person. In Risk of Rain 1, in Risk of Rain 1, the boss you have to kill is Providence, and his title is Bulwark of the Weak, which oh, no. really <laughs> drives home the point. It's like, you are not here to do good things. Yeah. Um, so... You don't have to like really interact at all with any of the lore, any of the deeper story. Um, you don't have to get the hidden boss that I mentioned in the planetarium. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do Eclipse. What else do you okay. also need to do? You technically don't need to play with every combination of things that you unlocked. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, is there anything else that I am forgetting? I don't think so. I think that's everything. Okay. Interesting. That seems like a fair bit that you don't have to do. Mm -hmm. Um, some of those things were added in like a late, in that second deal or in the first DLC, the survivors of the void. Mm. Okay. So uh, like that hidden boss was added in that second DLC and that second like First big DLC. expansion like there was a mm, there was that because okay, okay. i'm thinking of it as um i played before full release i played in early access so in my mind i have that mm. big expansion where the game fully launched added all the bosses added a bunch of characters and then there was that second big expansion survivors of the void and now but it's the first dlc not but second ah, expansion. Okay, so that's, that's why i'm like mixing them up yeah okay okay that makes sense um, do the achievements feel unique in the roguelike genre? In the roguelike genre, some of them, yes. Um, okay. I don't think you're going to find kill 20 hermit crabs by chasing them off the edge of the map 
in any other game, uh, except Risk of Rain mm-hmm. One. Um, <laughs> there's some of them that genuinely do feel like, for example, Railgunner's Annihilator achievement, deal one million damage in one shot, um, kind of mm-hmm. hints at how Risk of Rain actively wants you to break the game. Like, okay. Risk of Rain is daring you to be as strong as possible because it also yeah. wants to be as strong as possible. It's it's a, it's an arms like, race. Do it. Exactly. It's like, are you are you powerful enough? Do you deserve oh. the title? Of Did you feel you were deserving of the title? Um I think I I think I'm pretty decent out of the game. At least I was pretty decent. Okay. I don't think I'd be anywhere yeah. as good anymore, but I was like playing Monsoon, I was doing quite a bit of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um Okay. But yeah, I think So you may uh-huh. Go ahead. I think no, go ahead. for the most part the there's a lot of achievements that are just like, oh, since it's character specific or like un- there's or um like mechanic to the game specific but a lot of the unlock items feel maybe a little bit more generic okay um stuff like defeat the teleport a boss in less than five seconds after it spawns it's like oh yeah it's just that feels pretty standard but then mm-hmm. something like don't touch the ground for 30 seconds as mercenary demon of the skies um that's also kind of an invitation like it is very challenging to stay in the air for 30 seconds so you have to like actively plan around it but yeah that's i think most of the achievements there's there's a decent combination of stuff that's like oh break the game which is really cool and then a combination of stuff that's just like do basic things that everyone does okay i need mm-hmm. to just move this okay. over okay um now you mentioned you used guides for some of the things where did you find the guides like where did you look um i use primarily i used a wiki if i needed it um the okay. risk of rain to fandom.com um, I mm-hmm. know I've heard that maybe the website itself isn't like the host isn't necessarily the best, but the content on it, the people who actually worked on it have done a great job keeping all of that information that's really useful. Um, so I think that's been that was the primary thing that I used. Okay. Um, okay. Now, would you recommend other people use that guide, or should they? Do you think they could do it without it? Um, there's a f- couple of ones that are just. I think that they could probably do most of the ones without it. If not, okay. All of them. You can find. Mm-hmm. You can find the Nakahuna's altar by accidentally falling off the map, and then you're, yeah. and then you realize, wait, I didn't actually die. Wow, weird. Uh, but. There is that. Oh. Yeah, I think that would be the easiest way to do it. Okay. Okay. You no. You know. ha- go ahead. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was just like musing to myself. I do think, like, I've been thinking a lot about that achievement in particular. I do think. Yeah, right. I do think that it is technically possible to find it without following a guide. Okay. Okay. Well, I will still try to link a guide in the description uh, for those of you who want to take the challenge on for yourself. Of course. Now, James, has this changed the way you look at Risk of Rain 2? Like, do you regret it all? Are you happy you did it? How do you feel about it? Um, the all achievements, I really, I was really happy because um, it, un- and the biggest thing for me was it unlocked a bunch of those extra abilities that I wasn't really, um, that really change up that the way to play the game so it really added some freshness to the game um it added some goals when i was playing with my friends you know maybe helping them get an achievement um so it, it mm-hmm. added a lot of banter um okay 
That's good. And just in general, it was... Uh, the game itself was really fun to play. It was honestly kind of relaxing, despite how it might mm -hmm. seem otherwise. Maybe my brain is just wired incorrectly, uh, and I find <laughs> this relaxing. But I think I do not regret any amount of time that I spent with this game, honestly. I think it was, that's it was great. great. That's great. That's really important. Awesome. Now, for our final question. Would you recommend others go for all achievements? Why or not, and what kind of player might enjoy this, and what kind of player might hate this? Um, so first of all, you should enjoy roguelikes. If you don't, <laughs> it's just not even worth talking about it at that point. Uh, okay, I thought, I thought that was just a threat, like, you should enjoy this, or I will come to your house. It is also a threat. <laughs> but my lawyer also recommends I don't expand on that. Um, <laughs> the All achievements in this game, I think, is actually fairly accessible it's not something like isaac where it's you know even if you're really like if you're starting from nothing in isaac it's going to take you hundreds of hours um i risk of rain 2 it'll still take you quite a bit but it's a lot more relaxed and a lot of the achievements are a lot more accessible okay. um, so you would probably get up to i don't know like probably 90 or so achievements by just playing relatively mm -hmm. casually um okay so i do think that this game you could i think i would recommend this one if you have that yeah. enjoyment of um roguelikes if you have that interest in games that want you to break the game so those are really fun. I that's I think probably the most achievable that I will talk mm -hmm. about. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you could join us once again. Of course. Um there is there is that one elusive episode that is not a roguelike that I hope to have you on for. Yes, I am still sometime in the future. I'm still working on it. Um I I needed to take a quick break. Uh, because of, you know, between both work and just other stuff that was coming up, I was like, maybe we should tone back. We'll go back through that at some point. No, I completely um, understand. It's all good. But I, I have just one achievement left. Just one left. Oh, in that, that one. is, that is progress. Cause you were earlier missing two, if I'm yes, not mistaken. But now I'm down to one. Oh, oh, that's exciting. So at some, I will not spoil it for those of you who do not know what game we're talking about right now. Although you can probably find it in the other episode but so go watch that episode if you want to know haha -ha. yeah absolutely go watch episode what was that 20 oh god uh this is 20 i think it was 26 maybe yeah pretty sure it's 26 anyway go on go watch the one about binding of isaac it's my longest episode yeah. ever yeah and it only featured james which is insane to me yeah just just watch the whole thing obviously it's amazing absolutely 100 uh, percent. the achievements <laughs> too many too many <laughs> or not enough yeah it's all probably right. too many well <laughs> all right thank you james so much for being here really appreciate having you of course you. and thank you ladies gentlemen everyone in between and beyond so much for being here for another episode you know they come out every month make sure to check them out and we'll see you in the next one Bye bye goodbye